better anyway. Hey, I'm Mike Thompson. Welcome to Positive Partners. On this episode, we're talking about fleas and ticks. It's spring. Spring is coming in right now, and uh, we're all wanting to take our dogs on walks and out in the woods, but we have to protect them from these little biting critters. So uh, watch this episode. We'll talk about uh, types of ticks and treatments and all kinds of stuff. Glad you could stay with us. Well, today we're going to talk about fleas and ticks, something every pet owner just loves to talk about. Not we've had our home infested with fleas before, which I'm sure that's always everybody creep. has. Yeah, yeah. And it just gives you this creepy feeling, things right. jumping on you, and yeah, you just never get rid of it. Yeah. Speaking of things that we're mainly focused on ticks, mm -hmm. um, although some of the uh, some of the stuff that you can put on might keep the fleas away as well. Um, so we'll get into all that. We're gonna, it's gonna be a two-parter today. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna look at uh, what kind of ticks we have in Ohio, uh, what are the diseases they carry. We're gonna look at some uh, uh, Center for Disease Control maps of the incidence of tick-borne diseases in people. Um, there are also maps you can find on the internet of, of tick-borne diseases in dogs. Uh, these are mostly bacterial diseases. They're a little, not to freak people out, but the, the organism is, is, is related to the uh, spirochete that's in syphilis. So it, it gets systemic and the best time to treat it and the antibiotics treated effectively is early uh, to keep this, keep this condition from getting uh, established and chronic and uh, even debilitating. So, so Lyme disease is in there and, and, and ehrlichiosis and, and, and uh, anim anaplasmosis. Or so does the tick naturally have this or is it because it bit somebody else before? That's a before? good question. We will get into that very specifically. That's sort a great like a mosquito question. mosquito thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, there, there's a time when, when these ticks acquire these uh, uh, diseases and uh, there's a host that they require them, acquire them mm. for. It's not deer, so uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know we get like get into that ticks. like deer ticks, right? The deer's the 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 uh, uh, end end zone host for these ticks. So if we could have uh, uh, no, well, I just talked on the way up here. I just talked to my uh, veterinary uh, clinic, and this year, this year in 2018, these first months of 2018. And this is very early May. Very early May. They have had uh, a little over, a, uh, and this is one single veterinary clinic, a hundred, and they screen every, uh, every uh, animal, every dog hmm. for, for these diseases. It's a so common, like a blood test? Yeah, it's a blood test and it's a quick one and it's for uh, anaplasmosis and uh, heartworm and ehrlichiosis and Lyme disease, hmm. um, and and in that testing they've had a hundred over a hundred cases of ehrlichiosis, and they've had almost a hundred cases of uh, anaplasmosis. So it's it's out there, um, and it, and one of the things is that uh, dogs are used uh, by the medical community as a sort of a sentinel, a first mm. warning line right. of what people are in danger of being exposed um, to. So, okay, well, if we can have the, uh, the, uh, that the picture, picture? The, the tick picture of from the Center of Disease Control. Okay, here are the ticks that we have in our area. And I'm not sure what the heck happened, but when I was growing up, we just had the guys on the bottom. Yeah. You know, the bigger ticks. Yeah, you got bitten and you took it off and there was no, no irritation, big no big deal, you're done with it. Yeah. But now we've got these little small guys and I've gotten yeah. bitten before and I've had a weld on me for like three months. Yeah. And yeah. it itches and it's not fun. No, it's not. It's not. So we've got the uh, 
black-legged tick, which is also known as the deer tick. And uh, the nymph stage of that is a, about the size of a poppy seed. It's really tiny. Mm -hmm. Try um, finding that on your big hairy dog. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> And then you got the Lone Star Tick, uh, which has a, at least the the female has a, a dot on on its back. Hmm. Um, the uh, and the dog tick, and as you see, the male and female ticks look uh, a little different there. And they go through uh, four stages. Uh, they start off as a larva coming out of the egg that has uh, been laid. Uh, and that larva on its own, uh, on, that larva is the, uh, comes out, and they're basically disease free. And there's hmm. one disease that some of them have, but. Where do they lay their eggs, do you know? Well, they, their, their first host is like uh, white footed mice hmm. and birds. Birds, yeah. And squirrels. And that's very small, warm-blooded uh, animals. So those larvae then uh, feed, and they pick up these these bacterial diseases from that first host. Now the nymph stage, after that larva feeds, it'll feed one time. So basically, if if someone gets bitten by a larva, if you could, larva have six legs. If you've got a, if you get it, and you, you huh. yeah, and you can tell. Well, that's that's six six legged. The chances are there's not there's not disease there. But anyway, they after they feed that one time, they turn into a nymph, which is a juvenile eight legged uh, tick. These are the ones that, at least among uh, black legged ticks or deer ticks, transmit the most disease. Now these come out. These come out, uh, they'll be coming out in May and so forth through the summer, uh, and uh, they, they need to feed in order to turn into the adult stage. And one way to, I think, I've heard you can find some of these things is uh, with a lint roller. Yeah. After you come out of the woods, roll the lint roller over you. Because you won't see them, say like on my shirt, you wouldn't right. see them on that. Right. And so you roll the lint roller and it picks them up. It's a good, good. That's a good, good. Uh, one of the good tips there. I, actually, the I'm last... going to go into it. There, there's sort of a series of things you can do. Right. And uh, and the more common, the better combination you have, the better yeah, protection you have. Yeah. The last time I have. was in the woods, I I probably picked off 25 of them. Oh my God. Me. Yeah. I haven't been in the woods yet. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Um, anyway, and also another point is you don't get these diseases directly from your dog. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if your dog's got it, you, you don't get it by your dog licking you or anything like that. Um, it's, it's a tick-borne disease. Um, okay. So now the adult female has to feed before the adult female can uh, reproduce. And there's a point about, about ticks is that particularly for... Uh, Lone Star, or uh, not, I don't mean Lone Star, I mean for uh, deer ticks, or also called black legged ticks, they are active anywhere at 32 degrees, freezing or above. So mm -hmm. you, got a, you got a day that starts out in the 20s, but now we got 30, 34 degrees out there. There's ticks. There's, there's those, those uh, 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 yeah, those uh, deer ticks are active. Um, so. All right, so now if, you, if you've got a tick there and you want to see what kind of tick, it, you know, let's assume you've gotten it off you and you've got it contained, which isn't that hard. Anyway, you can see what tick you're dealing with, just Google it. Um, now, if the tick is really engorged, they look different, hmm, right. then you can go to tickinfo.com and it, it's got pictures of ticks at various stages of, stages of being full of blood. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, you can kind of still figure it out there. You can also mail these things off to, you know, agencies and they can, or you can send a picture of it and so forth. Now, something important to remember is that even if a tick is infected, not all bites transmit disease, because uh, that takes time to do. But are all ticks infected? It varies in the, you know, in, in, in some areas, and, and this information keeps changing mm -hmm. year to year. But like in some areas, in Pennsylvania, this guy did, and unfortunately, there's no, in most states, there's no uh, ongoing monitoring program to, to collect ticks and check them to see how many are, are infected with these bacteria, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and where to be particularly looking out. 
Uh, but this guy did went over to Pennsylvania and he got uh, he got a bunch of ticks, and 60% of them in that area is around Erie, Pennsylvania. Uh, so, but just the fact that at at the veterinary clinic uh, where I go, you know, and I called them today, they've had a hundred dogs infected, you know, with their lichiosis just mm -hmm. this year. And like I said, this is only early May, and a hundred dogs infected with anaplasmosis. So it's it's out there in in our area. That's but, that's dogs that went to the vet. To that's that, dogs that to went that to the to that particular vet, vet that did did this. Right. Does routine screening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but how long does it take for a tick to be attached uh, to transmit disease? Well, you know, opinions vary. And I'm, you know, just to give the disclaimer here, this is not medical information. This is not veterinary medical information. You know, any of us who have dogs or we're out in, you know, out, uh, you know, in outside. We're, we're just kind of dog enthusiasts that like to pass on some good information. Yeah, yeah, and so we're going to have to have, we're get, we've got these concerns and we're going to have these discussions with our vets and, mm -hmm. and we may even wonder about our own, uh, you know, health, you know, and so forth. So anyways, a, a place to start. So from what I was able to gather, some people say, well, it might take up to two days of attachment for a tick to be fed uh, and then at some point, they, they, they take what's in their body and, and push it back into the, the host, whatever animal or person they're feeding on. Hmm, that sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then uh, some, some people say, well, it can take as little as, say, 12 hours. Hmm. You know? so, but the point is that, uh, and this gets to checking, uh, that if you check on a regular basis there, if you check you know, once a day, well, if you don't, find it the first time, the chances are you'll, you'll find it the next day. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's gotten a little bit more, you know, blood in it or whatever. It's something that'll show up or you just happen to notice it. Um, and so that is going to reduce the chances of, of transmission because you're, you're, you're trying to stay within that 24-hour uh, window. Uh, so checking once or twice a day is a, a part of good prevention. Uh, people who uh, have tick-borne diseases, uh, there was some, you know, someone went to a, a, a medical doctor, uh, looked at, at what had happened, and 30% and of the people who had those diseases didn't recall being bitten by a tick. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, anyway, so uh, in some places the incidence is, is, is relatively low. Maybe you're talking, you know, I don't know, 5% of ticks that have got these, and others it's, it's high, you know, like in around Pennsylvania. Uh, so are there particular places where ticks bite? Yeah, we would we'll definitely get that we'll get to where there. to look, the, where to look on your dog, okay. you know, and, and so forth. Now, if we can get the the uh, um, map from the Center of Disease Control, uh, at the the bottom of the slide will tell you what disease we're looking at. Okay. Yeah. Um, can't tell what yeah, I, I can tell there just from the highlight. That's anaplasmosis, and the darker it is, the, the more the incidence. Okay. Now, on all these diseases, uh, and anaplasmosis, let me just give you a little bit of the, what are the uh, symptoms here. Uh, where have we got? Okay, it's so called dog fever or dog tick fevers transmitted by the deer tick. Symptoms, it's similar to the symptoms of other tick diseases, includes fever, and this is from the uh, uh, American uh, Kennel Club Health Foundation website. Uh, symptoms include um, fever, loss of appetite, stiff joints, lethargy, can include vomiting, diarrhea. In extreme cases, dogs may suffer seizures. Hmm. So it gets to be, can be a real deal. And if we uh, can switch the, another one there, <coughs> see what we got. Now, I'm pretty sure that's ehrlichiosis. Um, it's cut off at the bottom. I'm pretty sure that's ehr ehrlichiosis. Um, and this is uh, anaplasmosis and ehrlichiosis is what's showing up uh, 100 cases each at, at my vets. And so it's caused... It, and it says caused by the brown dog tick. Now, we'll see a picture of a brown dog tick. I just got off bow. Mm -hmm. After a walk into an area, I thought, well, I, I can let down my guard here a little bit. 
Um, well, that wasn't true. Mm -hmm. So the symptoms may not surface for months after a transmission and can include fever, loss of appetite, depression, weight loss, runny eyes and nose, nosebleed and swollen limbs. Um, let's see, what's the next one? Uh, okay, I think that is, I think that's Lyme. Yeah, that's Lyme disease. Yeah. Um, and it started out with Lyme disease. You know, it was really controversial in people. People say they had Lyme disease and it was Was there a place in Lyme, Connecticut or something? Yeah, like? and, and it started up there. And then it's, as it spread out, people were saying, well, they've got it. But the, you know, the medical community was saying, well, you know, it's, that's up in the Northeast. You know, you don't. And these symptoms are so nonspecific, mm -hmm. you know, flu, well, achy joints. I just don't, you just think you got a flu or you got the icks or something. So and that's one thing you got to look out for is if you get bit, I think there's a small circle of red that comes out away yeah. from it. It's not just a red place. Yeah. It's there's a, a red place with a, a circle around A circle. It. And the, unfortunately, um, maybe 30. Which could be ringworm also, but you yeah. got to get it checked out because yeah. you don't want to ignore either of them. Yeah. But. 30 to 60 percent of people have that, and and there also is a, a rash thing that happens with some of the other ones, but a pretty large percent of people, maybe 30 percent of people, don't have it. They never get a they never get this characteristic ring, hmm, you know. Right. So anyway, so that Lyme disease is actually you could just see it year after year when you look at maps. It just spread and spread and spread, spread east to west and spread north to south. And so, that, that whole thing about having a cold winter and killing bugs, yeah. I think it's That's a wives tale because it doesn't seem like it helps. It's the thing of the past at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, and what, we, what we've got probably, you know, how, how these uh, ticks uh, spread is that well, we've got warmer weather, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got, uh, you know, we've got uh, people building, and so we're building in more areas that were uh, inhabited by animals and mm -hmm. natural habitat, and we've got that. So you, then you have uh, deer, uh, and I've got nothing against Bambi, but you know, we have a lot of deer around. We don't, they don't have any natural predators to control the size of their population. So. In Portsmouth, where I live, you know, we got deer. They they love living in town. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for them. Right. You know, so you've got deer there. You've got you've got plenty of 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 of, of uh, opportunities for mice to feed, and we got mm -hmm. you know birds mice and, all. and cats and birds and dogs yeah. and everybody running around. Yeah. Right. Right. So so that's how these uh, condition these um, these uh, um, and they just organisms kind of like are spreading. On like plants. So when you walk by, they, they got their arms out. They and do. Grab a hold of you. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's called. You know, there's a term for it, but they've got their arms out, and then they, they, and and this will get into uh, prevention and and uh, keeping them off you. But they they pick up um, carbon dioxide hmm. and okay. and warmth, and so they'll use those signals to uh, to uh, to tell them when to drop off. So if they brush by if you brush by they've got those little hooks out there mm -hmm. or if they pick up a carbon dioxide or that odor signature well then they'll drop down and you know hmm. see if they can land uh, on on a, on a host so let's see here we've been through those um, we talked about these diseases can be treated effectively um, by uh, antibiotics and let's get those pictures of, of Bo and the tick that was in his in his ear. Now this go. was this was Monday night. I'd taken him along a flood wall. It was all mowed. And I just let my just garden, like a yard. It's just like a yard. And I thought, you know, I'm just I'm not gonna take extra precautions today. So anyway, but I'm 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 writing out the notes for this, roughing them out Monday night. Uh, well I better check Bo. So I looked in his ears, and uh, this will get us to uh, actually where to, where to check on your dogs. So in that lower left hand, It's the hairy part, it's just hairy left part. of the whole, you know, where the ear goes in. Go, just, go left and down just a little bit, yeah. and you can see that guy hiding under the hair. He's hiding, yeah, yeah. Now, so I got that tick off, and, and um, now this is a point where... Well, okay, yeah, that's a good point. Well, uh, okay, if you'll f uh, flip up to me, I'll, I'll show. 
how you get them off there I mean there are tick removal tools you can get mm -hmm. on Amazon and so forth and or use a let's see what hold it to, in front of you hold it okay go back to him there All we right. go. Uh, there. there we go. Okay, so as you see here, what it's got is it has a very fine point on these tweezers. Some tweezers are flat on the end and they're broad. These tweezers have a have a have a point on them. It's almost it's a it's a like a sharp point. Um, comes out like it's sharpened like the front of, like of a, a fork or, or a chisel or something. Right. So the point of, the, of, of any of these tick removal tools or using a fine point tweezer is that you get down to where the tick is embedded and you, you place the, this attachment tool or you place your fine tweezers right there where the head, as close as you can, right on, on the skin, so, and then you, you pull up with a steady uh, force and the, the, the reason you use tweezers like this is, or a tick removal tool that's got just a fine area of attachment on, right to, at the head, is that you want to avoid squeezing that tick's body. Because mm -hmm. that tick's body, if it's got you know, bacteria in it, if you squeeze it or aggravate that tick, that tick is going to then be pushing fluid from its body into the body of the, your dog or you or whatever. And if you weren't infected, you are now. You know, yeah, right. It Maybe the, the tick hadn't transmitted anything because it's only been on there a little bit and it's mm -hmm. only gotten a little blood. So anyway, you take it off. And as a precaution, it's a pretty good idea to get some plastic, you know, gloves like we can get. And, you know, they're, they, they, what, nickel a pair or something like that. Mm -hmm. They're not much. So put on some gloves so in case the, the tick, some blood from the tick get, does get out there, you know, and you happen to have a little cut on your finger, you you know, poke yourself or something like that. You don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, if you can show the picture of that tick, and the, that's the tick. Now, what you can do with these things, that tick's been in the freezer. It was in the freezer for uh, overnight, uh, almost 24 hours, and that tick was, was beyond dead. Um, so, but what you can do is put them in a baggie, one of those sealed baggies, mm -hmm. or if you want, put them in two sealed baggies. Yeah. <laughs> All right, put them in, put them in your freezer. If you want to, you want to keep it. Uh, and um, this is a dog tick, uh, and that is happened to be the habitat we were in was was more typical of where dog ticks would would be this grassy area even though it had been mowed and it looked more or less like a lawn that was long cut. Anyhow, so there's, there's that tick. Um, now, where do you, where do you uh, let's see here, let's skip ahead to where do you check on your dog? This. Yeah. All right, well, this is from, I'll just show you the picture here. Uh, this is uh, taken from the American Kennel Club, health articles from PetMed, and uh, dogsandticks.com. It's a picture here, and I'll just talk you through it. You want to check, like I did with Bo, you want to check in the dog's ears, and that tick wasn't easy to see, and if it had been mm -hmm. smaller, it would have been uh, harder to see, because that was an adult tick. It had overwintered. So that's an adult tick, an adult female, that is looking for a host to uh, feed on so it can get enough food so it then, then can uh, mate and, it, and, and, and produce more, more ticks. So you want to check inside the ears. You want to check under the collar. Uh, you want actually an odd place is you want to check near the eyelids. Mm -hmm. um, you want to check... Uh, you know, underneath the dog's uh, legs here, where that exposed skin is, underneath their back legs, in I guess what you would call more or less the dog's private areas. Basically, it seems like it's places that uh, there's less hair. There's there's, there's less more hair, and it's to skin. it's it's warm, mm -hmm. and there's less hair, so it's easier to get to. Right. Yeah. And then under under their tail, and also a weird one. You want to check between their uh, between their oh, toes. Oh yeah, I did see a picture of that, and there yeah. was like 
ticks upon ticks in between this dog's toes. Yeah. Like, wow, I never really... And if you didn't spread those toes out, you wouldn't see them. So mm -hmm. this is a very good reason um, to get your dog used to being uh, handled. So how you do that with body handling. So, you know, if your vet's checking your, your dog for ticks, they're going to be looking in these spots. Um, you, so you get used to your dog used to you touching your dog. You have a goodie that they like and, you know, you run your hand around their eyes. Yes, good. And so they get to be, uh, my glasses fell apart. There we go. Uh, so they get used to being uh, touched in all these areas. And so on, on that, uh, anything you're doing like that, you got uh, how, how intensely are you touching, how long are you touching, you know, that sort of stuff, how much are you rubbing. And so the dog will get used to all that by mm -hmm. degrees. So you just vary each one and, and take your time. And, you know, you got to get them up. off the dog, too, because, you know, me and my, my guy sit on the couch. Yeah. And if they don't bite him or if he's been on medication so they don't bite him, right. they crawl back then they're on gonna me. Be, yeah, so you want to check. And they bite me. Yeah, yeah. So you want to check when you, when you bring your dog in. And you want to rub your dog in the opposite direction that its fur mm -hmm. runs. Um, so if you see any, if you feel anything weird or a bump or something like that, you know, Make it's, sure it's not a, a skin tag before you start pulling on it. Right, yeah. You want to get <laughs> you're, you're going to get a little light or something like that. And your mm -hmm. dog has to be really used to you uh, handling them to, to do that. So, okay. So. Now, I think there might be, I don't know if it's a, if it's a hillbilly come online or if it's an actual uh, country music song that, you know. Check me for ticks, I'll check you for ticks. Yeah, right. You have to be, <laughs> when, we, when we're talking about each other, that's a, that's a good point there. So we got just uh, about five minutes left. we got to run through this because the next, the next time we'll be talking about what do you do if you're concerned your dog's sick. Or right. if you're concerned maybe you're sick. Right. Uh, you know, how do you start talking with your dog about that? So, okay, some things you don't want to do with tick. You don't want to burn them with a match. You don't want to smother them. You don't want to, you know, do other things to aggravate them and try to back out. They don't work and they might cause the uh, tick to... Oh, while they're still attached. Yeah, while they're still attached, okay. right. Yeah. Because I now, just throw them in the, the campfire or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've got this tick, potentially you could save it and send it to some service that will if it's been on somebody not if, not if it's just crawling around right right but if it's been on your dog or 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 if, you if you had to pull it, it off yeah you could send it and find out is this tick infected they'll do a a a, a, a chroma they'll do a, a like complicated a genetic analysis mm -hmm. you know where you know it's be com complicated biochemistry so um how do you keep them off your uh Let's talk about how do you keep them off you. The, the Department of Defense has a two-part... Um, yeah, we're out two of part, time. We're out of time, so that's what we'll get into next time. How do you keep them off you? How do you uh, keep them off your dog? What do you do if you're concerned your dog is sick? Or what if you do if you're concerned you're sick? So that's where okay. we'll go next time. So we'll see you in June. Talk more ticks. Yeah. Welcome to TikTok, I guess. TikTok. <laughs> Thanks for go. watching. All right.